Hey guys, hope you enjoyed that intro. Um, today in this video, what I'm gonna be talking about is maybe a couple things that you should know or consider before you want to start breeding your gargoyle geckos. No way is this meant to deter someone if that's something that you really wanna do, but this is just so you can have some expectations and maybe if you want to get prepared um, with a couple things first beforehand, so that way that you can be as successful as possible when it comes to this. The first most important thing, in my opinion, is your intention. Um, yes, you know, when you breed animals, you can make money. And that is not a bad thing. It shouldn't be a topic where people are afraid to talk about just because you know, these are animals and sometimes um, people shy away from bringing the money into um, the conversation. But it should be something that is talked about because it can be a way that you can, if you don't want to, you know, become a full-time breeder and, you know, make a living and feed yourself off of it, that's completely fine because I'm sure that's a whole other you know thing to get into but let's just say you want the hobby to pay for itself there's nothing wrong with that at all um you know it's it's awesome when you can sell an animal and then go out and buy some food with that or sell an animal and go out and you know upgrade your enclosures and provide better care for the geckos that you currently have or you know sell an animal and then go out and buy another one that you're really looking forward to. So the money aspect should not be a bad thing. However, I believe that if you want to breed, your number one intention should be for the love of that animal. Because if I knew, oh, you know, a certain, let's just say ball python morph could make me, you know, a thousand dollars per, per baby. If I just went and bought out a pair for that, at the end of the day, you know, a month goes by, six months go by, my my interest in that is gonna drop just because I personally don't have a passion for that species. So I think number one is you should definitely have a passion for that animal and you probably shouldn't start out your first experience with gargoyle geckos is just to buy a, a breeding pair. You should probably buy at least maybe like a juvenile um, at the oldest and let that grow out and get used to their care and their their behavior and that type of stuff So number one important thing is your intention. Are you doing it for the love of the animal and the money is going to be a benefit of that? Or are you just looking for what a certain animal is selling for and you just want to breed it just to make the money? So um, that's just my opinion on that But I think that's an important thing is for your intention because it takes a lot of work it takes a lot of time and a little bit of sacrifice as well. So if you don't have the love for them, your care, um, your results may go down a little bit. The second thing is you're gonna have to think about, do you have the room, all right? Because the gecko enclosures that I have, as you can see here for the adults, they are 54 quarts. There is um, the length, the height, the width on there. Um, so I have one of those for each of my adults. So that means if I'm going to have a pair, I need at least space for two of those for adult enclosures. And then let's just say if a female is going to lay at the minimum, you know, six eggs, or let's just say she hatches out, excuse me, six babies in a year, then I'm going to need six baby enclosures. And if I keep them, six juvenile enclosures, and then six adult enclosures. So just keep that in mind. It's gonna take up a little bit more space. And with it taking up more space and having more enclosures, comes dealing with um, the husbandry, right? You're gonna put more time into cleaning and keeping them humid and feeding. And also probably the most important thing, if you live in a Northern state, like Pennsylvania, um, is how to keep them warm throughout the winter. Because now it's not just gonna work, you know, you can't just have one bulb on all those enclosures. Um, either you, you know, get lighting for each of the enclosures, which uses more electricity, or personally, what I do, 
because I have a big green mill, different sizes, is right here. Um, a space heater with a thermostat that's built in. Um, so that way, if I have them, say, in a, a room just like a normal bedroom, which they are in, uh, I could put that in there and maybe set the temperature. Well, what I have it to is 75 degrees. So that way, it's keeping the whole room warm. So no matter if I have 10 enclosures or 50 enclosures in there, they can be kept at the same temperature. And there's a bunch of different ways to keep them warm, but that's just something to think about as well. The third thing to think about is the potential for an injury. Um, this can happen because it's not just you put them to, well, sometimes it is you can put two together and you won't have a problem at all. Um, but sometimes it isn't like that. Sometimes they bite each other. Sometimes they bully each other. You don't want a female where the male is losing weight or not eating and then becomes um, an unhealthy weight to breed. Or I've had a male and female, I've watched the male bite the female's head and he actually bit her eyeball and I watched the fluid in the eyeball come out, which freaked me out and I immediately separated them. But turns out they're pretty much like tanks because that did not affect her at all. I've had them lock jaws and actually rip a tooth out before and the male's lip was real swollen. And in this case, as you can see right here, I've had a male bite down onto a female's neck that damaged her skin. Then when she went to shed, she didn't shed evenly. So then this whole portion of her neck, the skin came off and it was just an open wound. And it took a pr pretty long time for her to grow these scales back. And obviously there's no color there anymore. So um, the third thing to expect is the potential for injuries and making sure that you're okay knowing the risks, making sure that if you need to, um, you can you know, consult with a professional, whether it's the veterinarian or whoever, um, that can help you out. And then also, if you're willing to sacrifice um, a breeding season, if something does go wrong, because that is something that you're gonna have to think about if they drop weight too much, or maybe they really aren't getting along and it's getting dangerous, you separate them and you lose that whole season of eggs. So it's just something to think about that not everything goes smoothly, but most of the time and with experience, it does. So just be prepared for that. But again, like I said, this video isn't made to deter you, just bring you realistic expectations. The fourth thing is to make sure you have an incubator set up. Doesn't have to be you know, if you aren't particular at what temperature that you want to incubate them at, um, because the temperature can affect how soon they hash. As long as you, my, what I try doing is keep them around 75 degrees because I find that at 75 degrees, they hatch between 80 to 90 days, um, right around there. But you want to make sure that you have a stable incubator, incubation environment. Um, and that is important because obviously you don't want the eggs to get disturbed or bumped around or, you know, people going in and messing with that. And you want to make sure that they uh, are at a stable, you know, temperature and everything like that. So that way you have the best chance possible to make sure that you have some babies hash out. So just make sure when you're thinking about it, you know, think about beforehand, where can you put um, your you know, if you just have like a hatch box or a lay box or whatever you're using, where can you put that, that it's not going to get disturbed and it can be uh, kept at a good temperature until those babies hatch. The fifth thing is loss of eggs. Um, yeah, it's easy to do the math and think, okay, this female, she's gonna lay eight eggs. You know, I'm gonna have eight babies and everything's gonna be good, but that's not always the case. As you can see in this quick little video that I actually took today that I'm really excited about to see Magma, who's this male, 
is best production. So check it out and notice um, the egg's clutch mate. It's not gonna hatch, so check it out. All right, guys, check this out. This is just a video on the fly, um, but so far the best magma baby that has hatched out. Yeah, I have really high hopes for this one and cannot wait to see what it's going to look like. Um, still has some of its shed on. There is his clutch mate, but you can even see, even without it in the egg, it looks like that one just might not hatch, but it's just a lot smaller. Who knows? It's not moldy. Um, I haven't candled it at all lately, but we will see. And then these two are born on 11.5, not 9.5. This is the one that I mislabeled. 11.5, so expect two more babies coming out. Both of these are looking good. This one was small from the start, so both these legs are looking good, so I have high hopes. Um, this is the best one from him so far this year, but even next year, it's gonna be way more females and way more babies, so I can't wait to share this with you guys. So as you can see, when they were laid, you know, 90 days ago or ever long ago, yeah, I'm thinking in my head, this is great. I'm gonna have two beautiful babies. However, it's not always the case, so just be prepared. Not every egg goes as planned. Sometimes they just don't ever develop. Sometimes they go bad and that's okay. You know, that's nature, that's part of it. But just have realistic expect expectations that, um, you know, if you're doing it and you're thinking about a profit type of thing, sometimes it doesn't always work out um, for how many babies you're gonna have. So just have that expectation that it's happened and just understand too, that it's not necessarily your fault it's okay it's just nature taking um you know it's just nature taking its course and the sixth most important thing um what to know before breeding is all right so you successfully gotten through stage one through five and figured out all those problems now we're just going to use the example of six again you have six babies do you want to grow out all six of them? You might, but also you may want to, you know, get rid of them. Not in a bad way, but you know, you wanna sell them. You wanna find a way to get rid of them so you aren't raising up a bunch of babies and now you can potentially have the hobby start, you know, putting money back into uh, what you put out. But the issue is in the, the reptile hobby or the guards it's hard to sell something if someone doesn't trust you just because it's very easy to i could steal someone else's pictures and then just you know post something or or send a message to someone say hey i got this baby for sale and you know there's nothing stopping me from doing that so sometimes well, I know your reputation is everything, especially when it comes to these animals. So sometimes if you don't have, you know, if you just are, have something posted online and you have nothing else to show for it, or maybe, you know, I see a, a baby that you're posted and I go and ask a couple people, hey, have you ever dealt with this person? Have you talked to them before? And they're like, no, I never talked to this person, never heard of them. A lot of times, you know, it doesn't matter if you have the nicest baby in the world, people are going to be a little bit reluctant if you don't have any trust there. So when it comes to you making sure that you're able to sell the babies, I think one of the most important things is be active in the community. You know, you don't have to be, no one has to be a social media expert or, you know, a guru or anything like that at all. Um, but I highly encourage you having a Facebook or having an Instagram and interacting with other breeders, not only for your own sake, for, you know, getting all that knowledge from someone else, but also that way you start building relationships. You know, you start building your own reputation. So when it does come, come time to selling the babies, people know that they can trust you. And word of mouth is so huge that say, someone might, I might not, need to buy that baby from you but i might know someone that 
so that someone is looking for that. So if I know that you're a trustworthy person, you know, I've had a conversation with you, I'm, I'm more, you know, likely to refer someone else to you as well. So that's definitely an important thing is, you know, stay active in the community, not only for, I've learned so much from so many people and I'm so grateful for that. So not only for your sake of like being able to grow and learn, but also for building those relationships, gaining trust of other people. So that way, when it does come time to sell um, a baby, if that's the way that you want to go, you're going to have those relationships and that trust already there. And, and hear me out. It doesn't, you don't have to have, you know, some crazy colorful gargoyle gecko or anything. Don't think you need that. Um, you can have any color or quality or whatever you want to call it. And you will find someone that wants to purchase for you from you. Um, if you're trustworthy, they know, you know, you're doing what's right for the animal. You're going to have no problem finding a buyer for that. So that's definitely one of the most important things I would say just overall and not only the education, but so that way people will want to purchase something from you um, is to get active, you know, on Instagram, Facebook, talk to other people, reach out 90% of the time, you know, most people are really nice and they'll take whatever time that you need to you know, help you out with whatever you need or just chat, do whatever, right? When you're into this stuff, it's hard to find people in real life that are into it as well. So whenever you, you know, are on Instagram or Facebook or even dropping a comment on here, you're able to connect with people around the world that have the same exact passion and love for the, uh, for the reptiles that you do. You know, I, I don't know anybody in person in my life that even has a clue what the heck I'm talking about when I talk about these. So it, it's honestly such a huge thing to get active in the community. Not only will it help you, you know, educate, it will help you uh, be able to, you know, sell off your babies if you do breed them, but also it just connects you with so many other like-minded people that it doesn't make it feel like you know, you're some crazy person that's into some weird, cold-blooded creatures. It gives you a sense of, you know, I, I've built so many great friends um, throughout the social media. So that's definitely an important thing. And finally, I wanted to start ending my videos this way just because I have so many people um, to be grateful for, to have conversations with and friendships with and learn from. Um, that I felt like it would be nice to give them a shout out um, for you guys to follow or talk to or, you know, these are just people that I think are good people uh, that I think do right by their animals and they are people that are going to spread positivity and people that I've only had a positive interactions with and I think deserve um, some recognition. So for the first time doing this, I want to shout out John Felicetti. He never pronounced his last name to me, so I might pronouncing that, be pronouncing that wrong, but this guy is one of the top people I look up to. He has an insane collection of so many different animals and a large collection as well and such high quality. He's super knowledgeable, has had a very long time um, dealing with with these reptiles and before I ever even gave him a dollar you know he was always offering to hop on the phone with me and I've had multiple hour-long conversations with him of him just helping me out and talking me through things and giving me tips before I ever purchased anything um, from him so I think he deserves this shout out um, so shout out Johnny underscore racks on Instagram definitely follow him even though he posts like once a month, it's always something good. And he has a wealth of knowledge and has never turned down a question that I've had. So just wanna say thank you to everyone uh, for the support. It really means a lot. I just wanna do this to hopefully give 
some value away to some people because sometimes you can't find every question or tip or trick in a book just by Googling it. So if you ever need anything, reach out to me. I will always answer any questions or any messages that you have. And give me a follow on Instagram at Red Rack. But thanks again, guys. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, if you need anything, just let me know.